my dear friends, I'd like to wish you and your families a very blessed Easter. I hope and I pray that the resurrection of Christ has opened up a new dawn for you in your spiritual and even just normal experience. I hope that this hope that Jesus inspires around the world by his resurrection would be the beginning of new things in your own life. And so as we celebrate this solemnity of Easter Monday, I am praying for all of you and praying for your loved ones and praying for anyone who is in panic at this time, anyone who has lost a job, anyone who has been impacted in any negative way by this this incident, this virus. We pray for all those who are worried about how to feed their children, pay their bills. Pray for those who are looking down this barrel and all they see is more bad news. Pray that God may help you realize that though things may appear to be falling out of place, that he is still the Lord of this world and he is putting everything in its place. That includes you, that includes your family, that includes everyone that you care about. And so we continue to also pray for our sick, pray especially for those in critical care. Pray and ask that the God may be with them, and God may be with doctors and nurses who are providing care, and that whatever our doctors and our nurses are doing and other medical personnel would be effective for healing and recovery. Continue to pray for our governments. Pray that our governments around the world may come together at a time like this. Lay aside their differences and work together because this is bigger than just an epidemic. It is a global pandemic. It needs global attention and global emphasis and global cooperation. That leaders may recognize this moment and take it for what it is. God has given it, allowed it for us. We must make the most of it. And so I pray even for those who do not have jobs and are thinking, wow, now that this situation is so bad, before it was bad enough, now it's even worse. And they're worried. God may help you realize that he is, even you, he has something for you too at a time like this. So our opening hymn for today is Easter glory fills the skies. Easter glory fills the skies. Easter glory fills the skies, Alleluia. Christ now lives no more to die, Alleluia. Darkness has been put to flight, Alleluia. By the living Lord of life, Alleluia. 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 Mary, mother, greet your son, Alleluia. Radiant from his triumph, Alleluia. By his cross you shed his pain, Alleluia. So forever share his reign, Alleluia. 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 In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My dear friends, we are gathered here on this solemnity of Easter Monday to bless our great God for his love, for his mercy, and for his kindness. Together with all the intentions I mentioned at the beginning, I'll also be praying for anyone who has sent me a prayer intention at this time. Pray for all those who have asked and requested God's intervention, that our good God may reveal to you that he is hearing and he is listening and he is attending and he does have a plan for your situation as well. 
to prepare ourselves, dear friends, for this Mass. Let us call to mind our sins and ask God's mercy and forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners to repentance. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you. We bless you. We adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who give constant increase to your church by new offsprings, grant that your servants may hold fast in their lives the sacraments they have received in faith. We pray for your children everywhere who are looking up to you for a touch of your blessing, O God. For those who are sick, may they find healing. For those who are giving up hope, may their hope be restored. For those, O God, who are in fear, may you expel their anxieties. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading is a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. On the day of Pentecost, Peter stood up with eleven, raised his voice and proclaimed, You who are Jews, indeed all of you staying in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to my words. You who are children of Israel, hear these words. Jesus the Nazarene was a man commended, by, commended to you by God with mighty deeds, wonders, and signs, which God worked through him in your midst, as you yourselves know. This man, delivered up by the set plan and foreknowledge of God, you killed, using lawless men to crucify him. But God raised him up, releasing him from the throes of death, because it was impossible for him to be held by it. For David says this of him, I saw the Lord ever before me. With him at my right hand, I shall not be disturbed. Therefore, my heart has not has been glad, and my tongue has exalted. My flesh too will dwell in hope, because you will not abandon my soul to the nether world, nor will you suffer your Holy One to see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. My brothers and sisters, one can confidently say to you about the patriarch David that he died and was buried, and his tomb is in our midst to this day. But since he was a prophet and knew that God had sworn an oath to him, that he would set one of his descendants upon his throne. He foresaw and spoke of the resurrection of Christ, that neither was he abandoned to the nether world, nor did his flesh see corruption. God raised this Jesus. Of this, we are all witnesses. Exalted at the right hand of God, he poured forth the promise of the Holy Spirit. That he received from the Father, as you both see and hear. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to the song is Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. Keep me safe, O God, 
you are my hope. Keep me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, my Lord, you are God. O Lord, my allotted portion and my cup, you it is who hold fast my love. You are my inheritance. Keep me safe, O Lord, you are my hope. I bless the Lord who counsels me. Even in the night, my heart extorts him. I set the Lord ever before me. With him at my right hand, I shall not be disturbed. Keep me safe, O Lord, you are my hope. Therefore, my heart is glad, and my soul rejoices. My body, too, abides in confidence, because you will not abandon my soul to the nether world, nor will you suffer your faithful one to undergo corruption. Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. You will show me the path of life, fullness of joy in your presence, the delight of your right hand forever. Keep me safe, O Lord, you are my hope. sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Mary Magdalene and the old Mary went away quickly from the tomb, fearful yet overjoyed, and ran to announce the news to his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them on their way and greeted them. They approached, embraced his feet, and did him homage. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. While they were going, some of the guards went into the city and told the chief priests and all, the, all that had happened. The chief priests assembled with the elders and took counsel. Then they gave a large sum of money to the soldiers, telling them, You are to say, His disciples came by night and stole him while we were asleep. If this gets to the ears of the governor, we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. The soldiers took the money and did as they were instructed. And this story has circulated among the Jews to the present day. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, I, every day I try to imagine my own experience that during this entire debacle, this, uh, this problem with the virus. People are locked in their homes. Businesses are locked. People are losing their jobs. Thousands and thousands are dying every day, especially here in our own country. And families are changed. Patriarchs and matriarchs are growing without the first ceremony, without a, without a goodbye, sometimes not even knowing how they die, you know, all, all of these things. 
will trouble every mind. And it, it doesn't matter how how brave you are. This this is not about bravery. It is about being able, having the sense to calculate, you know, the toll as it increases every day. So it, it is in this context that I'd like to reflect with us this morning. There are people who are silently desperate at this time. They're still struggling to be strong, maybe strong for the children, but they feel like crying. They just feel like doing something. They are raging in their heart. They are enraged deepest in their soul. The soul is bitter at this time. And they're wondering, God, where are you? Why are you not saying something? Why are you not doing something? Why are you not coming to our heart? Why do we have to do, deal with all of this ourselves? And all those are fair questions. Because those are questions that acknowledge the fact that I have come to the limits of my own ability to do anything and to effect any changes. I have don't seem to have control over what is happening right now. So whatever questions you're asking, it's a fair question for God. And I have no doubt he is taking note of all of those questions, taking note of all of those emotions that you are expressing or exhibiting in your conduct. And he is not upset. He is not offended. He understands us better than anyone else would. And so I'd like us to focus, whatever it is that you are feeling right now, on your feeling. Don't judge your feelings. Your feelings were given to you by the Almighty God. And they do set the purpose. They set the purpose to let you be aware and to get in touch with yourself and recognize what the situation means to you. If it's anger, it's a recognition that you disavow and refuse to accept whatever it is that is causing the anger. So your, your feelings are God's gift to you. Celebrate them. Accept them. Just be the manager of every one of them. Because they, are, they were given to us to manage, not to manage us in turn. It is for us to manage them. So we must first be aware, wow, this is what I'm feeling. And then you think about how to handle them. Now see what is happening here from the Gospel reading. Now, Mary of Magdala, of all the disciples and the apostles, she was the only one who demonstrated bravery and bravery and devotion to her, her Savior. No one else shows up. The apostles were in hiding. It's Easter Monday. They are in hiding, <laughs> technically. They are quarantined. Out of fear of the Jews, they are afraid for their own lives. And so, see, to understand what is happening here, these guys are all in hiding for their own lives. Mary braves up and goes to the, very early in the morning to the tomb. And the Bible said, when she arrived at the tomb, she didn't see Jesus. She said she was fearful. Yet overjoyed. Now, those are two things that should not kind of happen at the same time. You cannot be fearful and overjoyed. So I, I don't know what the evangelist was trying to say here. It is very difficult for you to be fearful because when you are fearful, your heart is jumping and palpitating. But the only reason why these two can come together means she was fearful, not sure what has happened. But maybe she remembered. That, yeah, the Lord has said he was going to rise. Maybe she is risen. So that is, it is only in that sense that these two emotions can abide side by side. That she was fearful. Fearful that maybe he didn't really rise. Maybe they have stolen his body. Maybe something has happened. And then overjoyed because she thought, maybe he's risen. Okay, let me go be the first to go tell this, this information. But what was she going to tell the apostles? Could you imagine? What was she going to tell them? That I went there, there was nobody. I didn't see their body. There was nothing. 
What do you think and how do you think the apostles were going to receive that kind of information? That would have been very traumatic for the apostles. We already are afraid of their own lives. They would have thought, wow, these guys are not satisfied with killing him. Now they have gone to steal his body. And who knows what they're going to do for us or, or, or to us. That is a kind of anxiety that Mary was going to probably create in the apostles. Jesus knows that. He knows how. If Mary gets to the apostles, how they are going to feel. Nobody was going to show up any longer. And so, Jesus doesn't allow that to happen. And this reminds me of a book I read in my seminary days. Then came Jesus. Then came Jesus who comes at the right time, at the right moment, not a minute late. He comes when you think you have got reached the wit's end, you've got to the limits of your own ability, where there is intellectual or even moral rupture, and you cannot push one inch further. He shows up at that time, at the right time. So while Mary, I'm sure she's in a panic, so that she's moving, this mood, mood swing, moving from being joyful, being fearful, being joyful, being fearful, because of the panic of what has happened. Right there, Jesus appears, and the Bible said, and behold, Jesus met them and greeted them, called her Mary. And they approached, embraced his feet, and did him homage. And then he said to them, he gave them a specific instruction. Don't go there and then say what you didn't realize or what you didn't do, what you were not sure of. He says, Take this information, definite and certain. You might ask, why did he do that? Because the Lord realized that in a moment of great panic and great anxiety, telling everything and your information clearly, distinctly, directly, it's important. You don't say stop. That creates more and more anxiety in the hearts of people. That's why Jesus appeared to her and gave her a definite instruction, definite information on what to do. Not to go and create greater and more panic and escalate the situation and the anxieties for the other, other apostles. So he appears and says, go, do not be afraid. Tell the brothers to go to Galilee. They will see me there. Tell the brothers to go to Galilee. And they will see me there. Now, I, I like to bring that from the encounter and the experience of Mary right back to today. Your experience, my experience, the experience of everyone who is right now in a panic, trying to hope that this is going to end maybe by the end of April or in May, but not sure. So you're moving also like Mary between being joyful, between being happy and being sad and being fearful. You can relate with Mary right now because I have no doubt there are times during this encounter that you feel joy, there are times you feel sadness, there are times you're bouncing between several emotions, uncertain, fearful, panicky, and you can name any number of emotions that you may be feeling at a time like this. And you're wondering how much longer before the Lord shows up on me? How much longer do I have to stay in this darkness, in this bubble? Now believe it, the Lord is already preparing a package for you, for me, for every one of us. That's how much he cares about us. What happened to Mary isn't just something that happened in some distant time. It is happening right now. Believe me, Mary did not realize one minute before, one second before Jesus appeared that he was just there. She did not realize that, but he was there. And so right now, even in your own lives, while you are bouncing between all of these emotions and thinking, how do I deal with this? God is preparing something because he also wants you, like Mary, to be the carrier, the bearer of good news. Now you realize Mary didn't just carry some news to go scare everyone because she had witnessed the Savior himself. She had, she had worshipped, honored and worshipped and bowed and embraced his feet. 
she was carrying clear, concise, and precise news that was good news. She was bearing good news for the other 11. My experience and my hope and my prayer are that, like Mary, we who are right now fearful, panicky, and in all kinds of jungling emotions, will experience something of the Lord, will become witnesses of that, and suddenly become bearers of good news to a desperate and crying and grieving world. You can be that one person that the Lord chooses to use. You can be that 100 persons that the Lord will choose to use. You can be that 1,000, that 1 million, that 2 or 3 or 4 or 5 or 100 million people that Jesus would use if only we are available and seeking and searching. My dear friends, may God, who in Jesus appeared to Mary on this early morning of Monday, show himself to you, make you realize that he has you, that he has you. As always, I'd like to end my reflection by reminding you that you are the delight of the Almighty God, that God loves you very much. The Lord be with you. My dear friends, let us now open our hearts and pray for our needs. Before I start, I'm going to give every one of you, whatever you are watching, I'm going to give you two minutes to bring up your intentions before God at this time. While you are doing so, I will sing a devotional. Jesus, I believe. Jesus, I believe. Jesus, I believe. I believe in you, Jesus, I believe, Jesus, I believe, Jesus, I believe, I believe in you. Jesus, I believe. Jesus, I believe. Jesus, I believe. I believe in you. Jesus, I believe. Jesus, I believe. Jesus, I believe. I believe in you. Now we lift our hearts first, presenting all the intentions that you have brought before God's altar. We ask that, like incense, your intentions, your needs, your prayers, your concerns may rise up to God and be acceptable to his altar in heaven and that he may grant the rain of his blessing, the bread of his spirit and the power of his mercy to be with you in your need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. I'd like to pray for all those who have sent intentions at this time, those who have asked our prayers, I pray especially for a dear friend of mine who experienced a slight, a slight stroke yesterday. I pray that God may help him find healing and protect him while he is receiving treatment in the hospital. I pray for his dear wife, I pray for his family, that God may help them at this time of great struggle. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are very sick from this virus. Pray for people we know. Pray and ask that our good God may visit with them like that angel and may speak the words of calm and healing and may breathe the breath of life into their lungs. That like Adam, a living body may become a living soul. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
We pray for our doctors, pray for nurses, pray for our EMS workers, pray for our police, our military. Pray for all medical experts, researchers, people who are working night and day to find an end to this virus. That God, by his spirit, may provide them clear guidance, good judgment, and a very brilliant imagination just so that they would come up with some measures to handle and to put an end to this virus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have died. Pray especially those who died alone. Pray for those who are in fear of dying. Pray for their families whose hearts are broken, whose lives are changed forever. That God may give rest to their dead. That God may bring healing and comfort to their grieving. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have lost jobs. Pray for those who are losing their jobs. Pray for those whose businesses are in dire, dire straits. Pray for people who are so confused about what the future holds. Pray and ask for those who are getting bored, getting angry, getting upset. Pray for those whose emotional, emotional tank is almost running dry. They are becoming impatient. That they may feel the peace of God that speaks calm in every desperate situation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And finally, I pray for our priest. I pray for our Pope, pray for our bishops, pray for all those who are en providing encouragement at a time like this, that God may bless them in their ministry and that God may add his blessing to their words. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We end by asking our Blessed Mother to be with us as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and the hour of our death. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands become our bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my beloved sisters and brothers, pray that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of his holy church. Amen. Accept graciously, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, that renewed by confessing, by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness. We ask this. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and it is just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this day, above all, to Lord yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death. And by rising, has restored our life. Therefore, overcome with Pascal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they are claimed. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore this gift we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Before 
at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. The Lord Jesus took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, the Lord took a chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. With the first acclamation, let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one, by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Timothy Broglio, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters who have died from this virus, O oh God. Remember those who are hanging on in ICU. Be with them, O oh God, and bring rest to the dead. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all we pray that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have placed you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us now rise and pray in the water our Lord gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant all peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always. My dear friends, wherever you are, may the peace of God find you, be with you, and bless you, bless your family, and bless your home. And may the peace of God keep you calm in a very disturbing time. From me to you, peace be with you. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Look up, my sisters and brothers. Look up and behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. 
Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. For all of us who are at this time unable to receive the Eucharist of Jesus Christ, I would just request you to open your hearts and your lips. I will virtually offer you the body of Christ. And as we always do in church, your response will be amen to the body of Christ. My brothers and sisters, open your hearts and your lips. The body of Christ. Amen. Most gracious God, your children around the world have opened their hearts and opened their lips to receive you, albeit virtually. We pray, O oh God, that your blessing that can traverse spaces and places may be with them and bless them, that the nourishment that they have desired may be granted to them in full measure. We ask this through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. May the grace of this Paschal Sacrament abound in our minds, we pray. And make, and make those you have set on the way to eternal salvation worthy of your gifts. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before the final blessing, I'd like to take a moment to express my thanks to all of you for joining us at this mass and i continue to pray for you and i hope you pray for me i'll be going back to work as soon as i finish from here so i ask your prayers i'll be visiting with my patients and i pray that i'll bring them some comfort and god's blessing as always i like to end by reminding you that you are the delight of the almighty god that god loves you very much as always, you are special. The Lord be with you. The Almighty God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, this Mass is ended. We go forth in, in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. For our closing hymn, we will sing Alleluia, sing to Jesus. We will sing verse 1 and 2. I will put out um, the program for masses for this week and for this week. I think by weekend I'll give you the next week, the one for next week. I hope all of this will be over by then. But otherwise, we continue to do what God wants us to do at this time. Hallelujah, sing to Jesus is this uh, so he is the throne. Alleluia, he is the triumph, he is the victory alone. Of the songs of peaceful Zion, turn the like a mighty throne. Jesus, out of every nation, heart redeemed us by his blood. Hallelujah, not as orphans are we left in sorrow now. Hallelujah, he is near us faith believes no questions how though the cloud from 
sight we seeped in when the forty days were o'er. Shall our hearts forget his promise 